Welcome to this last episode of my build series. In this video we will do the wiring, we will improve the tool head adapter for Bamboo Lab hot ends, and we will print a few missing parts. And this SD card wasted hours of my life. As you can see in the background, I did get the printer that was actually printing, and we will start with the hot end. I did find a very nice adapter for the Bamboo Lab hot end and the stealth burner. However, the cables didn't go the way I wanted. I wanted to use the central channel in the hot end and not wire it like a Revo. The small channel or opening for the cables, that's the only change I made on this. This is what the remixed version looks like and I think it's a lot cleaner. The electronics at the back of the printer needed a new case and a new caddy. And I'm using the same principle as I did in the skirt, and this will house the SKR Pico. And I made a lid as well. I needed another case for the Raspberry Pi, and this is a remix. The fan is powered by 24 volts from the main power supply. I didn't have a 5 volt fan at hand. I'm happy with the look of this, and I think it's okay for a scrap heap printer. After checking out the schematics for the Pico, I found we could use a D sub 9 for this printer. Sometimes it feels good to keep it simple and I couldn't afford a fancy toolboard anyway. In my younger days I used to work in a recording studio and I installed a lot of audio equipment and cables. Soldering is boring but it's not too bad. I made a custom flexible D sub to D sub connector for this and after completing it I had to check it for continuity and shorts. Some thermistor inputs doesn't like shorts at all. With the wiring complete we can start configuring the printer and I am starting with the PID tuning. I'm doing that both for the heat bed and for the hot end and this takes a while. The heated bed on this printer is very slow but the heater on the Bamboo Lab hot end is actually quite good and it's very fast. It's time to check homing for the first time and this is quite exciting. This is a printer with the uh, sensorless homing and that gave me some problems during the configuration. I couldn't combine XY sensorless homing with the physical set end stop. I think I've seen that issue with the Sol SV08 as well. I don't know if they ever fixed it or if that is something we just have to live with. The homing worked as expected and I wanted to try out said tilt by skewing the bed. But I think I exaggerated this a bit. The probe was too far away from the bed. I then tried again and tried to do the homing, but this was a small disaster as it crashed into my wonderful flex plate. Only one thing to do, press the emergency stop button. I'll try this again, and this time without exaggerating the skew on the build plate. It's a little bit, but it's not a lot. And it starts with a normal homing. And then I'm doing the C tilt adjust. You can, of course, decide how many retries you should have for each of these points and how many times it's going to try this. And it's now going to do the adjustment based on this first round. In my configuration it will do this for one more cycle, but I'll leave it here. The next thing I'm doing is finding the C or Z offset. And it's a C calibrate routine for that, and I'm just using a paper. I'm now ready to test out the bed mesh, and the configuration is 6 by 6 points. 
and I know this bed isn't flat so I had to change the tolerances to get this to complete I now wanted to check out if we could extrude anything and that seemed to work just fine. And this is Red Petchy by the way. I'm ready for this printer's absolutely first print. There's no cheating here and no calibration, pressure advance, input shaper or anything of that stuff. Not even calibrate flow. I just start a print without any preparations at all. I used the Voron Trident presets in Orca Slicer but tuned down acceleration to 10,000 and not 20,000. The first print starts quiet and smoothly but I soon discovered that this table wasn't good for this printer. It was shaking all over the place. I will move it to a proper print room. And by this time I discovered that I have the problem with my end macro and the naming. Some places it's called print end and other places it's called end print. I don't know what is the correct one, but I had to make the same both places. And the print is nice, not where the nose got stuck at the end, but Otherwise, I think it's a very clean first print. I was quite curious about this heated bed and how the first layer would work, but uh, that worked just fine. And uh, the first layer is identical on all these four pieces. Very nice. I obviously couldn't do this without printing a Benchy, and this is a Benchy printed in Petchy, like the other samples I've printed. And I'm using the standard Warren profile for this one as well. There's a little bit of stringing, but otherwise I think this is pretty good, and remember this is Petchy. I think this printer will work fine for me and I can do some more calibration to improve it, but it's quite okay already. This has been a really fun and interesting project. I started out with this printer, or rather the parts from this printer, and ended up with this one. I would like to thank everyone that contributed to this project by giving me some useful comments or suggestions or just showing some interest in what I have been doing for the last few weeks. Shout out also to the Voron design team, you are doing a great job. If you are a fan of proper engineering, just build it as they have documented it. But what about that SD card I mentioned in the introduction? I had stability issues for almost two days and it almost drove me crazy. And this is the culprit. There's only one thing you should do with the uh, stuff like this. I don't know what my next project will be like, but I would certainly like to work a little bit more with resin. I thoroughly enjoyed that part of this project. If you haven't seen part 5 of this series, I highly recommend that you take a look at that and especially when I apply resin and make these bottom covers for the printer. Bye for now and I hope to see you back for my next project.